Now, okay, agreed. Classification is a very good method, but just by saying that we can't do. We have to have a criteria. How do we classify? The point is that for grouping, what do we do? Say I want to make a team of footballers, or I want to make a team in which I want say junior level boys or girls or senior level boys or girls. I will keep some criteria like say age or in some cases I will take some other criteria like level of knowledge or stamina or your footwork. So, whenever we are doing some kind of grouping we always keep a criteria. Say this you have a box of buttons you want to classify them. You will keep say color as one criteria, put all red buttons together, blue separate, green separate, white separate. Now, if we further want to classify it, you will see in the case of red buttons whether they have four holes or two holes, then on the basis of holes we will separate them. After we have done that also maybe we will go to size, we will separate the smaller buttons from the bigger buttons that is exactly what we do in case of classification. So, we put similar organisms together and different organisms are put separately. For this purpose we consider certain areas I am using the word area, but actually what we call it is a characteristic. What is a characteristic? What is a characteristic? You see when we are talking about or describing a human being, what do we describe? The appearance, how tall, what is the complexion, color of the eyes, color of the hair or behavior, whether that person is friendly, rude or loner like this. So, in the case of plants and animals also we describe form and function. So, say if we are describing the heart and we say that fishes have two chambered heart while mammals have four chambered heart, what are we talking about? A characteristic. If we say fishes move with the help of fins while birds fly with the help of wings what we are trying to talk is of function. So, the criteria for classification is characteristic. Now, how to choose a characteristic? Say you are making a wall, a wall of stones. Your first layer can be of any type. Fine. When you are making the second layer, it has to be according to the first layer. For example, the first stone probably has to be of this shape, the second one has to be smaller if we have to reach the same level and so on. And the uppermost layer again does not affect anyone, but in between layers have to be according to the lower layer. That is how we classify we consider characteristics starting from the very basis or you can say the basic cell design becomes the first criteria. When we consider a cell then the most important part is the nucleus because that controls and coordinates. What kind of nucleus is there? Is it well defined with a nuclear membrane? What kind of cell organelles are there? Are they well defined? with a membrane? If yes, then it is a eukaryotic cell as in case of human beings and many other organisms. But what if the nucleus is not well developed and is without a nuclear membrane and the cell organelles are not membrane bound, then it is a prokaryotic cell. So, the first criteria can be prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells.
so example of prokaryotic cell is bacteria and blue green algae while eukaryotic i told you can be many then we can come to number of cells if an organism is made up of only one cell then it is called unicellular like amoeba paramecium plasmodium chlamydomonas all these organisms are unicellular but in the case of other organisms they are made up of many cells so they are multicellular another very important criteria is can the organism perform photosynthesis and how will it perform photosynthesis is there chlorophyll or not the presence of chlorophyll and if chlorophyll is there is it performing photosynthesis or in other words what is the nutrition is it autotrophic or heterotrophic autotrophic would mean it can make its own food while heterotrophic would mean it obtains food from other agencies then lastly if the organism is multicellular then what is the level of organization are the cells arranged into only tissues or they are also arranged into organ and organ system so the complexity of organization so in this way we can classify organisms and a kind of hierarchy is getting created we are moving from simple to complex